Welcome back. In this video, we are going to continue our review of general topology. So, we move to the second subsection about the product topology. Okay, so we'll cover only this in this video, only this subsection. Okay, so here's the construction. If you have an arbitrary collection of topological spaces X sub i, we would like to put a topology on the Cartesian product that we defined in a previous video. Okay, so this is the set of functions from the index set i into the union such that f of i belongs to x i for each i. And two topologies come to mind. And you shall see that one is more interesting than the other, although less natural. Okay, we have the box topology by analogy to the case of just the product of two spaces. Okay, so a basis of this topology is the collection of all sets of the form product of ui, where each ui is open in xi. So this is what we call an open rectangle, if you like. Okay, so we have a product of open sets. This is what hap what we do in when we have a finite collection. Okay. So, if you recall the definition of the topology generated by a basis, a set is open if whenever for every point in this set O, and the point is just a collection family of elements or just a function. So we have two dual notations here, if you like. If there exists an open set ui in xi such that x is in this basis element and the basis element is in O. Okay, so this was the definition of the topology generated by a basis. Now, why this is a basis? This is very easy, straightforward. Because, first of all, the product, the product of the spaces is itself a basis element because, because each xi is open in itself. So the, the whole space is a basis element. So this is the first condition. It's a particular case of the first condition. Okay? And the second condition is satisfied because the intersection, just if you go back to set theory, the intersection of the product is the product of the intersections. So this is just very easy to do and do a double inclusion or equivalence. An element is here if and only if it's here. So the intersection, so this is also a particular case of condition two is stronger than the requirement actually. So uh, not not always the intersection of two base elements is a base element because the condition two of the basis is that if X is in the intersection of two base element, then you can find a third base element contained in the intersection and containing that point. But here we have something stronger. The, pro, the intersection of two base element is again a base element. Okay, so this is uh, trivial. So we have a basis and therefore we have a topology. Okay, this is called the box topology. Okay. Now, a less natural one, the product topology, which is more interesting. A basis element now is the collection, is the collection of all sets of the form product of UI, so as before. However, we impose something more restrictive. UI, of course, should be open, each UI should be open in XI. But ui will be equal to the whole space xi except for finitely many indices. Okay, so if you like, most of the elements here of ui are the whole space. And only we have a freedom to choose finitely many uh, uh, sides, if you like. So if you think of this as a rectangle, so each ui is a side. So most sides should be equal to the whole space except finitely many of them. So here again we have a basis, so same definition, uh, but this basis is smaller than the previous basis, right? So first condition of a uh, basis is of course it's fine because the whole space is a basis element. Here actually all ui are xi and so uh, yeah, so there is no xi different ui different from xi and once again here you can check that the uh 
the intersection of two base elements is a base element. So we, we, we so this is the same set, set theoretical identity. And now we have just to check something that if all UI are XI except for finitely many indices, let us say for for finitely many indices in some set J, J1, let us say. And here we have the same thing for VI. So if I is, diff is not in J1 union J2, then this is also XI because this is XI and this is XI. Okay. So if here we have, let us say, N1 elements or N1 sides not equal to the whole space, and here we have N2 elements not equal to the whole space, then here we have N1 plus N2 elements which are not uh, the whole space. So this is again a base element. Okay. So it's clear that the box topology is usually finer than the product topology. And they coincide when the collection is finite. And this is maybe what you learned in previous courses. Okay. Now, let us give some basic, basic facts about the product topology. And why do we prefer the product topology over the box topology, which seems more natural? It will be clear now. So, first of all, if we have, again, a family of sets Xi, we have the notion of projection from the product into a factor Xj that we call pi j, that if you like to each function or each collection Xi associates its jth component, or if you consider this as a function, then pi j of f is just f of j, so it's an evaluation operator if you like. So these are called projections. Okay. Okay. So let me list some results about the product topology. The product topology is the smallest topology that makes all the projections continuous. So I have to prove two things here if you want to prove that. I'll not prove it in this video. Maybe you encountered it before in the course on general topology, but it's, uh, it doesn't make any harm to reprove it. Okay? Just to test your understanding. So we have to prove first that each projection is continuous with respect to the product topology. And conversely, if each projection is continuous to some with respect to some topology, then this topology contains the product topology. Okay? Second result, if each space Xi is Hausdorff, then the product is Hausdorff in both the box and the product topologies. Of course, it's enough to prove that the product is Hausdorff in the, in the product topology because the Hausdorff, the box topology is bigger. So if, it, so if, the, 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 if the product is Hausdorff for the smaller one, it's Hausdorff for the uh, finer one as well. This is not difficult, just go back to the definition. And if each space is connected, then the product is connected in the product topology, but not necessarily in the box topology. And we may give counterexamples. So there are counterexamples. There's a counterexample in the book of Monkers. Okay. So you can prove this if you like. Not terribly difficult. Okay, so Already we see here why we have an advantage, why we prefer the, the, the product topology, because we have, the, we have the connectedness property. So connectedness is conserved under products if we put the product topology. Okay, but we may lose connectedness if we put the box topology. Okay, once again, if the collection is finite, the two topologies coincide. And now we have a deep theorem. Uh, due to Tikhonov, if each space is compact, then the product is compact in the product topology, but not necessarily in the box topology. This is a deep theorem. You, If you took the optional topo uh, general topology course last year, then you probably proved this. We are, we are not going to prove it in this course, but we shall use it actually later. So it's very important. It's, fun it's a fundamental uh, theorem. So we have now two reasons to uh, prefer the uh, 
product topology over the box topology. I will present another reason now. Let us consider a particular case of a product. Suppose that all spaces xi are the same topological space, which is the real line. Okay? And consider an arbitrary non empty set E, which is the index set here. So if we set i equal e and xi equal r in the previous construction, the product of copies of r, of e copies of r, if you like, is just r to the e. So it's what, actually? This is the space of functions from e into the union of r, which is r. And uh, each f of x, for each x in e, f of x belongs to r, which is the same. So this is a very particular case, the only case that you shall need, actually, in this course, when all spaces are the same. So we have a product of E copies of R. So, yeah, this is what I said. So we, when uh, when nothing is stated, we equip R with the usual topology, okay, the standard topology that you know. And now, the product topology on this product is called the topology of pointwise conversions. Okay, why do we call it in this way? Because conversions in this topology is equivalent to pointwise, because elements in RE are functions now, as we know. So, conversions in, this, uh, in the product topology is equivalent to pointwise conversions of the sequence of functions. Okay, let us prove that. Not terribly difficult. So, two ways. Suppose for first that we have a sequence in R of E, so we have a sequence of functions from E from E to R that converges in the product topology. And pick a point, an arbitrary point X in E, the index set. And as usual, let pi of X denote the projection onto the X uh, side, which is R. Okay? So by a previous proposition, this projection is continuous with respect to the product topology. And therefore, it is sequentially continuous. So, I defined this in the earlier video, uh, sequential continuity. So, the image of a conversion sequence is uh, converges to the image of the limit. So, if Fn converges to F, then the projection of Fn converges to the projection of F, of course, in the target space, which is R. Okay. But, what is the projection of f is by definition the evaluation of f at x okay because otherwise stated projections are evaluations evaluation maps and that's it so if you rewrite this so fn of x converges to f of x in r so and this precisely the this is the, this is pointwise conversions okay now conversely suppose that Fn converges to F pointwise, so at each point. We want to prove that Fn converges to F in the product topology. So we have to go back to the definition. So how, how do we prove that a sequence is convergent in some topology? If you know, we should have, you should know the limit. We have to take an arbitrary neighborhood of the limit and prove that all the elements of the sequence belong to this neighborhood for n large enough. Okay, so pick an arbitrary neighborhood of F in the product space. Now, of course, uh, a, a, a neighborhood of F contains an open neighborhood. and an open, So an open set, actually, by definition of the uh, topology, contains a basis element. Okay? It's something of this form, product of Ux, where each Ux is open in R, and Ux equal to R, except for finitely many indices X. So, denote these elements where ux is different from r by x1, x2, xk. It's finite. It has k elements. If now j is some index between 1 and k, what do we have? <clears throat> Since fn con converges pointwise to f, then fn of xj converges to f of xj. And since uxj is a neighborhood of f of xj, then by definition of conversions, now we are working in r actually because these are real numbers now. 
So for each xj, starting from a certain index, nj, depends on j, all the elements of this sequence of real numbers is in this neighborhood, uxj. Okay? And now it's enough to take the maximum of all these ind indices, and this is possible because we have only finitely many such indices. What do we have? We have fn of xj is in uxj, and uh, since for the other indices, fn of x is in r, so it's a new x. So what do we get? We get fn of x is a new x for all x and for all n bigger or equal than this index, capital N. So starting from this rank. And that's it. So fn belongs to the product of these open sets. So it's in this base element, which is contained in u. Okay. And that's it. So this means that fn converges to f in the product topology. Okay, and now what about conversions in the box topology? Uh, conversion in the box topology is even stronger. You can we can think we can uh, conjecture that conversion in the box topology is something like uniform convergence. Actually, it's stronger. A, con a sequence converging in the box topology is, in some sense, almost constant. Okay, so convergence in the box topology is very restrictive. <clears throat> okay, so this is the third reason why we prefer the, the product topology over the box topology. Okay, and so this concludes this video. In the next video, I'm going to revisit the notion of comparison of topologies because you shall need it later. So, thank you for your attention.